Today guys and gals I'm going to show you how to flash the BIOS. Um, so basically a lot of people want to know how to flash the BIOS. First thing you want to take note of is which BIOS you're on. And I'm going to kind of move around here a little bit because the light's kind of disrupted and blocked. There is the light and it's next to this BIOS ROM. That BIOS ROM is M BIOS, that's main BIOS and BIOS switch should be in position 1. Oh, BIOS switch is in position 1. I'll zoom out here a little bit. Okay, now watch this. BIOS switch is in position 1. So if I push it to position 2, it should go to BIOS ROM 2. Oh, it does. Does, does. Back and forth, back and forth. Anyways, that's just the physical connection it's switching around. The truth of the matter is that once the system is loaded into the UEFI, the BIOS ROM has already been removed or transferred, copied from the BIOS ROM over to Active DRAM. So now the BIOS is actually in here. Uh, the postcode AB means I'm in the BIOS. If you see this postcode ever and you have no video signal, it means your video adapter is screwed up. Um, that's not good. If you see a DB error here, okay, a lowercase d instead of the A, then you want to go here, and there's a secondary switch called SB switch. Single BIOS, you want to switch that to position 2. Position 2 should uh, unlink the dual BIOS uh, programming, and you'll just have two separate BIOS ROMs. Uh, if you want to speed up over overclocking recovery times, switching to position 2 helps as well. And if you get any boot loose, which you really shouldn't, then position 2 will help as well. Um, yeah. So anyways, I'm going to show you how to flash through uh, the UEFI. It's not hard. It's actually quite simple. But it does take a long time because it is a 16 megabyte ROM. Megabit, megabit ROM. Um, so anyways, do take a look at this. I have basic system specs. Um, I'm using the integrated graphics on this system. One stick of RAM, the stock cooler to make sure there's good pressure. No SATA drives, only USB and drive I mean, ports taken up are for keyboard and mouse and uh, my USB drive with the BIOS ROM on it. So, let's get back to the system. Alright, so, I am going to enter the BIOS, welcome, thank you, I'm going to press F2, I'm going to go to the old style stuff, um, now I just press F8, or you could use your mouse and click Q flash, right here, I just hit like F8, enter Q flash, yes of course, now, it's showing me that 16 megabyte, well it's 128 megabits, um, BIOS ROM, um, nothing special, that's the current BIOS version F6B, now, F6B will be a beta to the final F6 BIOS, which I do have on the drive. There's a new BIOS um, beta one called F7A, but I don't know if I'm going to flash that. F6, I believe, was the one that brought full overclocking. No, that was F5. Anyways, we're going to flash it. Update BIOS from drive. Select drive flash disk right here. Everything is here. This is a Linux flash uh, boot thing Intel gave everyone for free. Um, well, I don't know what was at the event. Um, so this is the right... Naming, you don't want to pick the Xenon 7 SOC Force BIOS, well it won't even work here. There's a special BIOS program that will let you flash any board with any BIOS, but don't, we're not going to mess with that. Here's what's really weird. Gigabyte has decided to name this one 97XGG1BK. I don't know why they did this, but this is the same BIOS ROM, I mean the same board. Uh, so don't get confused, as long as you download from Gigabyte's site, it looks legit, it'll flash. Plus, Gigabyte's BIOS has a lot of locks in it, and it will not flash a BIOS from another board. Um, so you want to make sure you get the BK edition, that's all that matters here. The black edition, okay? There's only three black editions, and for some reason the black edition Gigabyte motherboards have different BIOS ROMs than the normal edition motherboards. Yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of speechless at that. Uh, so we're just going to flash F6. Click enter, it reads the file, checks it, checks them. All good, bio state, all good. Um, it's from November. Um, are you sure you want to update? Sure, let's update. Erasing now. This is the scary part. Right now, your BIOS ROM is being erased. Active DRAM is the only place it is. Whew. System crashes now, the board will corrupt. 
So that's why people are scared to flash the BIOS, but <laughs> I'm not scared. Um, don't flick that switch right now either, because it'll erase a little bit of both and then you'll be screwed. Yeah. So it's erasing, it takes a long time. Uh, I might just leave. Oh, you guys want to see something cool? So I have a new test system. Okay, block you out for a second. This is an X79 test system I'm using right now. Uh, it's for some work I do at Tweaktown. Um, dual 980s in there. Got a UD4 in there. Uh, 16 gigs of 3200 megahertz Kingston memory. Uh, custom loop. The system is all customized by me in a 900D. Uh, I'm pretty proud of it. I don't know why. But, um, yeah, so this is the new test system for Tweaktown X99 motherboard reviews. I have actually done a lot of modifications to the case and the system. I can actively monitor really anything. So it's pretty cute, cool. Yeah, anyways, back to this one. Oh, and that's the thing making the noise in the background. That was a good aim. Alright, so see, it erases and updates blocks at the same time, and it takes a really long time. Um, I'll get something else cool to show you guys. But, uh, yeah. So this little thing is a thermal camera. Whoosh. Hooks up to the back of my phone, or bottom of my phone. Well, we don't need to do that now, do we? No. You can just go to my Peak Town Reviews to see some of those. Or I might do something on it. Alright, I'm going to let the thing power cycle itself. Now, there's a right way and a wrong way to power cycle, and the board by itself cannot do the right way. The right way to power cycle right now is for me to shut the system power. I just shut system power off manually while I was trying to boot up. Yeah, it kind of seems like a mean thing to do to it, right? It's just trying to boot up, and I just shut its power off. Anyway, so I'm going to show you what i got to do. So, step one, remove 24 pin. All right, and then I'm gonna clear the CMOS. I'm just gonna use the button. Boom, boom, boom. One, two, three, four. Mm, mm, mm. Now we're almost done. I'm actually gonna put a battery in there. I don't know why there's no battery in there. I hate that I have these batteries so close. Anyways, system powered, powered, and booting. Let's watch the post. Ninety-five. It goes to ninety-five in the resets. That's resetting the base clock. System is resetting. As long as you see fifteen on the screen, you're kind of good. Um, Ninety percent of the time, it'll boot up. Six two is video. It just booted. It's going to UEFI eight nine, and then it'll hit AB. Boom. AB is when we're in the UEFI. Boom. Right that screen. This screen is AB. So we're in. Now it's asking me two things. Should I load optimized defaults and then reboot or what? Actually, yes. The one thing that helps people the most is to load the optimized defaults after clearing the CMOS and then reboot. Yeah, all good. No. Okay, I'm booting now. There's no OS because it keeps so it's, so it's just going to keep restarting on me. Um Oh, yeah, there's a Linux partition in the UE in the USB thing. Anyways, now we're going to flash the backup. So, dual BIOS mode is enabled. If I go to the backup, it's too corrupted, it's going to flash it. Shut system down. BIOS number 2 selected. Booting on BIOS 2. Oh, BIOS 2 also works. Something is... Why is this working? You're not supposed to work. Anyways, so, uh... Yeah, I am going to now flash BIOS 2. Oh, and I'll show you the cool thing. Okay, in the BIOS number 2. BIOS Dose. Um, welcome. I speak English. Thank you. Oh, this was probably the reason for the issues. First of all, the V core on my CPU isn't really one point. Four. And CPU temperature at 47 degrees, this is a really old BIOS. Well, because this is a really old board that came out before final uh, production samples came out. This is a final version, but 
the BIOS ROMs on these tend to be a little earlier. Now, the main and backup is best to match them, especially when using a new generation CPU. This is definitely the reason I was having an issue with my 4790K. So, we're going to flash real quick. F8, boom. Update BIOS from drive. Flash disk. F6. Yay. Check some correct. Flash it. Alright, now you're watching this flash. Who wants to see a motherboard under a infrared camera, right? Anyways, so... A little company called Seek sent me this from reviews and stuff. I asked them, hey, you guys want to send me a thermal camera? They're like, yeah, sure. Um, but no. Why would they want to send me a thermal camera? Anyway, so I plug it in right there. All good. Uh, password, you don't need to see it. Oh, so it directly goes to the Seek uh, screen. So now I'm at Seek's screen. Ooh, that's my monitor. And that's the wall behind it. Anyways, let's zoom out a little bit. So it finds the highest and lowest temperatures and displays them on the screen. So we're gonna go here. Oh, look at that. That's the motherboard. Look at that PEX bridge get hot. Isn't that cool? You can see the Gigabyte I. That's a PCH. Right? You can even make videos with this thing, so let me move to the side. So we can definitely see the PCH is the hottest thing. Well, it's not the PCH. It's uh, just this that covers the PEX bridge that makes the lanes uh, 32x capable. That's what's giving it that huge red spot. Anyways, we have some other hot spots. Um, oh, not really a hot spot. Uh, that's just DRAM power. CPU VRM is actually pretty, uh, pretty chilly compared to everything else. Orange is not one color. Orange is just the hottest color on the screen. So if it was 0C and then 1C, 1C would be orange. Um, so do not think orange is blazing hot. Nothing on here is in worry territory. This is just normal um, temperatures. And it's one of the issues motherboard vendors had when I told them I'll be using a thermal camera on their reviews. They were a little worried that they freak out people. But huh, it's, not, it's not my job to console people's feelings. So... My job is to tell you the truth. Anyways, so, Q flash almost done, verifying BIOS. Get my thermal camera away. Boom. Reset? Shut Thank you. Alright. So, I'm not going to let it boot. Nope, no boot for you. No boot for you at all. It's funny, I really shouldn't like abruptly shut its power off in the middle of its booting like that. So uh, beforehand when it's done and it's restarting, you just pull the power cord. Anyways, clear CMOS is being hit. Well, let me pull the power because there's a lot of built up energy in that PSU capacitor that doesn't correctly drain all the time. So I'm just going to hit clear CMOS here. Oh, I'm going to move the battery for a real clear CMOS. Come out. Good day. All right, now clearing. One, two, three, four, five. Mm. BIOS in. Boom. Now at this point, you could actually disable the dual BIOS link. I'm not like that, so I'm not gonna really do that. Power regained. Boom. Yes. Fifteen is on. C through A nine. N six F four. 9395 reset good that's all normal and now I should go to AB ask me if I want to uh, you know do that special thing yep called it anyways so that's really how you do it and then once you load these optimized defaults you could just do whatever the heck you want mm, take a nap you know get something to eat so that's how you do it uh, it's not rocket science. Pretty simple. Not the hardest thing in the world. So anyways, thanks for watching, and uh, come again.